Okay, so I'm going to take a quick look at the SN74HC244 octal buffer. I've got the um, the chip here inserted in the breadboard with a little bit of circuitry around it. We'll explain that in a minute. Let's first start by looking at that part number. So the full part number of the chip I've got here is SN74HC244N. Let's break that down a bit. Um, the SN is the manufacturer's prefix, um, so you will find these um, logic chips manufactured by several different manufacturers. Um, I'm not sure if all manufacturers manufacture all chips, but the prefix will tell you who the manufacturer is. So if you want to, you can go and find their specific data sheet. Although these devices should be compatible across different manufacturers. 74 indicates that it's part of the 7400 series um, logic chips. Um, there is also a 5400 series, which is um, military grade, so you're less likely to come across those. I think they have um, a wider tolerance band for, for temperature, so they can operate in um, presumably higher and lower temperatures than a normal commercial grade chip. Uh, the next part, HC, is the Logic family. You will find these chips, um, there are several different versions of them. Um, the common ones you'll find are the HC that we've got here and the LS. Um, the LS is the low power shock key version. And the HC one we have here is the high speed CMOS. So the, the LS, I believe, is a sort of TTL Logic. Um, and there are some differences between them, so you need to be a little bit careful uh, especially if you are mixing different um, families, which is not really in the intention. Um, although you can mix them, you just need to be careful. Um, they do have different uh, voltage level thresholds. So the, the threshold from where they switch from a logic high to a logic low and vice versa is slightly different between the, the LS and the HC. So you just need to watch that. There is also the HCT version, which again is high speed CMOS but it has TTL compatible inputs. So that can be handy if you are mixing them. And then the 244 is the functional designation. Um, these are octal buffers or line drivers. Um, and the 244 has non-inverted outputs. There is also a 240, which has inverted outputs and also a 241, which again does not have inverted outputs, but it gives you um, a choice of active high or active low on the enable lines. Um, you need to watch out for that one. And then finally, the N indicates the package. So the version I've got here is the N, which is a PDIP package. Now, one thing to mention about these um, package suffixes is that the letters used can vary between manufacturers. So again, something to watch out for. You want to be specifically looking at this if you're intending to build a PCB because you want to make sure you've got the right footprint. So next, let's move over to the data sheet. Um, the description here says that these are octal buffers, meaning that there are eight buffers, but they're organized as two four-bit buffers with separate output enable inputs. So if we look down here, you can see they're organized into sort of two, two lots of four. There's four buffers here with an enable line, which enables all four of those. And then there's another four here with a separate enable line controlling these four. So you can kind of think of this as sort of a chip being split into two halves. The thing to watch out for on these chips are, are the outputs inverting or not, which this version of the 244 is not inverting, and whether or not these enable inputs are active high or active low. Both of these are active low. They've got the little bar above them, so they're both active low. So when these lines go low, so if this one was to go low here, all of these inputs will be passed through to these outputs. But when this line is high, um, these will all go into high impedance state. So it's just like they're essentially disconnected from the rest of the circuit. We've got the pinout down here. 
So our package is the PDIP, so this is the correct diagram for our package. So if we look back at the breadboard, I've got quite a bit of circuitry here, so let me explain some of this. I've got four switches, one, two, three, four, and each of these switches is connected to uh, a pull-up resistor on one side. So these, these are all pull-up resistors for each switch. I'm using 1K resistors. Um, you can use anything from about 1K to 10K. The other side of the switches are all tied down to ground. So they're the black lines there, tying them down to ground. So when the switch is not pressed like it is now, the line will be pulled up to five volts via the pull-up resistor. And when I press the button, the line will get pulled down to ground. So the line I'm talking about is this, this yellow line across here. I've just tapped off it at this point with an, an indicator light. So I've got a yellow indicator light on the yellow line um, with the current limiting resistor going down to ground. So that when this line is high, the light will be lit and we push the button, the light should go out because the line's now gone low. We've got the exact same arrangement over this side and with the yellow line again. Now these yellow lines are feeding into the enable lines. So if we quickly look back at the, uh, the pin out, we should see that this is pin 19, which is 2OE. So that's for the second set of four buffers. And this yellow line coming in here is coming into pin one. And if we check against the pin out, pin one is 1OE. So this is the enable line for the first set of, of buffers. Now the other two switches I've got connected to the inputs. Um, start with this one over here. Um, it's the same arrangement. We've got the um, the pull up and the and the ground. Um, and although I've taken the connection out the bottom this time, it's coming from the right hand side of the switch. So it is the other side of the switch. It doesn't matter if we use the top of the switch or the bottom of the switch. Um, they're just connected straight through on each side of the switch anyway. So this switch is coming through to here, which is pin two. And if we check on the diagram, pin two is input one A one. So the output for that should be one Y one, which is on pin 18. And this is pin 18 here. So this is the output. And that output is coming across here to this red LED. That's why I made the line red. Um, it's so this is our, our first output output one so output one should be controlled by this um, output enable line the yellow line on this side of the chip and the green one is that's coming out of pin nine I believe yeah pin nine is to y1 um, that's the green LED and the input for that is it's 2Y1, so the input of that should be 2A1, which is pin 11, which is this purple line here. So that's this switch here. So this switch is the input for the green LED output, and this switch is the input for the red LED output. So if we power the circuit up, so the two control lines, the output enable lines, they're high. The LEDs are lit up and we can pull them low by, by pressing the button. And if we press this button here, so you can see when I press the button, the, the line goes low. So the, um, the yellow LED is going out. So the output enable line is now low. So that means the output will now pass through from the input. So if I was to um, operate the input, you can see that when I pull the input low, the output is going low. And when the input is high, the output is going high. And now if I let go of the control line and try to do that again, you'll see that input is no longer passed through to the output. The output's in high impedance state. So whatever is happening on the input, nothing will come through to the output. And it's exactly the same on the other side of the chip. There's a separate set of four buffers as we saw on the diagram. So if I pull this line low, now we can control this one, the inputs, as I'm operating the input, they pass straight through to the output. But if I let go of that line, let that line go high again, we'll see the input now has no effect on the output because again, it's in high impedance state. 
So we just got the two control lines controlling the, the two halves of the chip, their respective four, four buffers that are controlled by that control line. Now, what we could do with this particular chip is we could tie this, those two control lines together. I'll just briefly turn the power off whilst I do that. So if I tie this control line and this control line together, it's got a, a, a jumper wire there tying the two together. So if you wanted to operate it as a single set of eight buffers, you can tie the two control lines together like I've just done and you'll now see that just one control line can be used and both sides will operate. So that one's operating and that one is operating. So if you want to use it as a single um, octal buffer rather than two sets of four, you just tie the two output enable lines together. Um, which is something you can't do if you use um, some of the other variations of the chip. If the output enables are not both active low or both active high, you can't tie them together like this. Well, you can, but they won't operate as you as you might expect. So that was just a, a brief overview of the SNHC244 octal buffer.